before you take this out, go out to your car, turn it on, run it up to operating temp, um, idling, right? Take a picture of where your gauges are on the gauge cluster. Because they're going to move around and stuff, of course, while you're doing this. So you're not going to get them back in the same spot, especially after you take them off. So take a picture of it, of where they are at operating temperature and idling. So that what you're going to do is, when you finish with all this and you go to reinstall it, you're going to plug it in without the needles. Again, without the needles. Run the car up to operating temperature if you have some type of scanner or whatever it'll tell you when it's up to operating temperature and or you just let it run for 10 minutes you know you don't you don't need it you don't need a scanner just to do that um and then look at your picture and then put these put these back on all right so to get the gauge cluster out of your trans am what you're going to do is you're going to pull this piece down here by your by your shins and knees it's just got two two uh, little screws to hold it in right here and then one over there all right and you're gonna have to disconnect your trunk your hatch release okay then up here on this piece the the uh, sun guard I guess you could call it whatever the piece that goes around here um, that hold that goes over your gauge cluster you just pull it off there's no no bolts or anything holding it in it's just uh, it's just pressed in with little uh, pressure pressure things so you just pull it off and then you got to disconnect your um, fog light switch here okay Camaro guys you guys should have it a little bit easier all it should be is this in, in, inside piece in here you should just have two bolts right up here you just pull those out and uh, pull that plastic piece off and you should be able to pull your cluster out after you remove these uh, four bolts up here now another thing little trick you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to set your steering column as far down as it'll go and then take and then take the actual uh, stem the actual piece right here out okay and then take this plastic cover off because if you don't you're gonna scratch up your gauge cluster and you probably won't even get it out so that's how you get that out all right, so now we've got all of our screws out and everything. This just sits into a plug. There's the plug back here. Um, there's a, the male end is on the cluster on the back of it, and then the female end is actually set into the dash, if I remember correctly. I haven't done this in a while um, since I had my Camaro. But it's going to take some manhandling to get this thing out of here <clears throat> because you get to right here, and then it's just a royal pain in the ass. Um, oh, wow, that was actually a lot easier than I thought. And I'm wrong, actually. The male end is on the car. The male end is on the car. And the female end is on the actual uh, gauge cluster. Let me turn this around here. Right there. So, that just sets in there. Very easy. No uh, fuss with wires or any crap like that. That was actually a lot easier than uh, I remember. Alright, so now that we've got it out of the car, right now you know how to take it out of the car now I'm pretty sure y'all are wondering okay Jesse why are you taking this out of your car is it broken is there something wrong with it you trying to cheat on your odometer reading what's going on okay well the, this is not really a problem but the thing about Firebird and Trans Am gauge clusters compared to say Camaro gauge clusters you can change the LED lighting on the back just as easily as you can on a Camaro, right? Just those those four or five, I don't remember exactly which ones. But the thing is, the overlay, the piece, the piece with the actual digits on it, right, is actually tinted red. So even though you might change the color of the lights, it will have a tint of red to it. So you're kind of boned there. Some people have made some write-ups about how to get the red film off. Some people have made write-ups of how to just get a whole new, you know, cool customized overlay. Well, the problem with that is it can be expensive.
and scraping it off can be really tedious, really time consuming, and if you don't do it right, then guess what, you screwed up, and you're going to have to get a whole new overlay. So, my idea is, why not oops, sorry, get a Camaro overlay and put it on my Trans Am gauge cluster, because they're the exact same, except that the kilometers per hour is orange, and up here on the tachometer, it's orange. But the, 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 the numbers are in the same place and everything. It's, it's technically the same overlay, but it's not tinted red. They're clear. Because when I had my Camaro, I had, from the factory, it comes in that like whitish, greenish color. And I put red lights in it, because my car was silver. And I had red accents on the interior. But my Trans Am is blue. And the entire <laughs> the entire interior of my Trans Am right now is red. Um, the gauge cluster, the controls on the steering wheel, the radio, the HVAC, the um, the headlight controls, right? And I don't I don't want red for my interior lighting when my car is blue and black. There's no red anywhere on the car. And red just doesn't seem to be a good accent color for the car. So that's just my personal opinion. So this is going to be my remedy, hopefully, because I can put the Camaro gauge gauge overlay on my Trans Am gauge cluster. That way my odometer reading will still be the same, right? Well, temporarily, I still have the Camaro gauge cluster, and this is what it looks like without the overlay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Trans Am overlay on the Camaro gauge cluster and drive with it temporarily so it's going to have the wrong odometer but it'll still be the same gauges as, as long as they all work I got it I got it off eBay for like 20 bucks all right that's that's the easy thing all right because the guy was just throwing it away I asked him if he would just separate it so I could get the overlay and he said you know what I don't need it if all you want is the overlay I'll charge you 20 bucks now you can get the overlay separately if you just search around or you can just get the gauge cluster. You know, either way, it's a lot cheaper than paying several hundred dollars for a custom overlay, which I intend to get eventually. But right now, I'm not at that budget yet. I'm just doing little things. So this is going to be one of my DIY projects. So I'm going to put the Trans Am overlay on the Camaro gauge cluster, and then drive temporarily with the Camaro with the Camaro gauge cluster with the Trans Am overlay on it. I'm going to put the Camaro overlay on the Trans Am overlay, change my bulbs, change my needles, these are the Camaro needles, I'm going to change my needles um, from this orange and this red color to like a clear or maybe even blue, and that way I won't have a whole bunch of clashing colors going on, right? So, I'm going to reset my camera, I already took this one apart and deassembled it, I'm going to show you how to take this one apart and deassemble it, alright? Oh, maybe it'd help if I got my thumb off of the freaking piece of plastic. Genius me, right? I had my thumb on that, so. Alright. That has the bezel and everything already in it. You can decide whether you want to keep that or not. The Camaro one does not come with a bezel. Um, you can use a um, the body tab hook, you know, fork thing for these. Uh, you don't really need it, though. I'm just going to show you, they just come off pretty easily with a screwdriver, just as long as you keep equal pressure on the front. I'm putting like my middle finger on the side of the needle, and then putting this on the back, and then I'm putting my two fingers like on the front half of the, let me see, let me see if I can get of the circle here, not on the middle, so that I can get some pressure to push back on the screwdriver. And then you just kind of twist the screwdriver, and then they just pop off. And they're just little, little tubes that go on these little, little things right here. And you just do that for all of them. The light bulbs in this one should be the same as the light bulbs in this one. The difference is the overlay. This overlay has a red tint on it. The Camaro one does not. So here is going to be the real fun part, the real tedious part, is taking this off. It's just glued on. 
So, what you're going to have to do is basically pull it off. And when I first did this, it made a popping noise, and I literally thought I broke the shit out of it. So, don't freak out unless you do break it. This one... Yeah, it popped like that, but it was like all the way up to there. So the little pop, like, and I thought I just literally just cracked it all the way. So just take your time. You don't want to put enough force to literally break it. You just want to give it pressure and it'll finally pop like that. God, that scares me. Shit. Be careful of these, that they don't hang up on these little tabs here and don't let go of it because it will glue itself right back to it and you're gonna have to start all back over I can already see the red tint on this thing come on God, this is gonna rack it. you kind of want to pull back on it like back this way and up at the same time to give it that pressure and I know some of you guys that know how to do this shit listening to me and you're like, man, this guy's a fucking noob. Well, I'm doing this for the noobs also. I'm not doing it just for the experienced guys. So, if you already know this, I'm really happy for you. And yep, see the red tin on the back? So that is that. So this is the Firebird one. I'm going to put it over here. Here's the Camaro one. Okay. So now we're going to see how easily this thing goes back on. I have not done this off camera or on camera, so this is going to be interesting. Looks like it has a little lineup hole here. But I'm not even going to worry about using that. I'm just going to eyeball it. Fuck it. Whoop. Okay. Oh, Cant it to the right a little bit. Ah, fucker. Well, you know what? That might. Nope. That's gonna bug me. I want to do shit. Anything that's worth doing, worth doing right, right? Come on, sucker. Ooh, that might actually be it. That's it. All right. And that is on there might have some air pockets in there you'll have to just pick it up a little bit and then just work it back down right aren't I a genius I just make things so much harder than it really needs to be don't I <laughs> look at that so just use those to line it back up if you guys are gonna take on this project because obviously it's not very difficult if you use your brain which I wasn't there for a minute Alright, so those are effectively switched out. So this is going to have my Firebird odometer reading on it. Alright, so we're going to see how this works. I'm going to try and keep my big head out of the way. So, be very careful. Should go without saying. Do not screw this up. As you're, oh god, as you're putting it back in here. God, I hate that noise. Oh, God, I hate that. It's the most nerve-wracking thing when this thing finally pops in. Because sometimes it twists and you think you've broken. All right. Turn the lights up. So we're going to let that run for a few minutes. Start putting on some.
good thing is you can feel when the pressure is starting to uh, catch, so you can kind of move it a little bit still, and I got that one. Actually, quite a bit too I wouldn't suggest doing this over and over, though. It might, it might actually wear these stems out. Once you disconnect the contact back there, all these gauges are just going to fall. Oh, come on. There we go. Because they're, they have no input, of course. So, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to move them up so that the uh, bezel will fit properly. They'll go back into place when you plug it back in and start the car up because now they're set on the needles. Oh, wait. Always check, recheck, and then check again. There it is. And also, somebody on a forum at one point in time told me that I would need to take some bolts out of the steering column, or at least loosen them. Yeah, you don't need to do that. That's not required. So, don't worry about messing up your steering column. Woohoo! I know my head was probably in the way for that entire thing, so you guys are just going to have to figure that one out for yourself. And so, you just put this back underneath there, and you're done. So, hope you guys liked it, and I'll keep you updated.